was at my friend's farm yesterday. Man, was it hot. Yes, my face is sunburned. It shows my shoulders. They got sheep and pigs and lots of ducks and uh, geese, including uh, geese that I, of course, hatched out and ducks that I hatched out. My geese are really big on the, the farm there. Everybody wanted me to talk about this in live stream last night. Before I get to that, quick little story. I, uh, I stepped outside of their farmhouse, and I heard her just, like, screaming for me at the top of her lungs. And I thought a piece of farm equipment might have fallen on her or something, but I ran around to the side of their house, and she had a hold of a big, fat duck. And somehow that duck had had this green plastic mesh wrapped around its lower bill and so luckily I had a knife on me whipped out the old spider co and I sat down in the dirt and all the duck poop <laughs> and I took one hand and pried the duck's bill apart and I wedged the knife tip in there and I was cutting away that green plastic mesh because you know ducks are not that bright and uh, you know got the mesh out of the, uh, the duck's mouth there ah uh, what a day. Man, yesterday was just... Yesterday was a day. It's been one of the busiest weeks of my life, to be honest. Um, everybody... and I, I care about wisdom and um, polarization just like a magnet or inverse antinomies. I'm a person that's interested in the middle where there's no magnetic flux, and the same is true of the left and the right. I uh, care about rationality, logic, and common sense, um, but everybody wanted me to talk about that that abysmal disaster. It was like a nuke was dropped upon a, a gigantic steaming pile of something that smells really bad, that, uh, that uh, so-called debate. I didn't want to watch it at all. I caught like five minutes of it, and it was the most laughable disaster. You ever seen something that's so bad you know, somebody spins something, they've been spinning it for years, and anybody with five brain cells can see through it, but um, the people that play spin masters, but something comes out just so bold like the sun that you can't spin it anymore. You know, anybody that had half a brain knew that's what was going on the whole time, but to be honest, I would have thought that they would have, uh, you know, injected or juiced up you know, uh, the old boy. Uh, so he would have actually been hyped up a little bit for, you know, two or three hours for that so-called debate. But, man, I mean, <laughs> the people on the left are squeezing out razor blades. And even the New York Times, which is as radically polarized on the left as you could get, like, yeah, you got to drive back. Yeah, you got to get rid of that guy. <laughs> you got to get rid of him. Come on, man. <laughs> Sorry, it's just too funny. I mean, I heard like 70% of the country was watching that. I'm sure a lot of foreigners were as well. Um, do you remember before that they kept saying, you know, he was like trying to shake hands with like nobody there and like turned around and like, oh, that was cheap fakes. The spin masters kept calling that cheap. Hey, yeah, man, he's... He's bright and alert, and of course, anybody with a half a brain knew that he wasn't. Um, once again, I politics. I don't. I don't care about it. I'm interested in keeping my eyes open. And, and these people, which of course are totally evil, all of them, are like children. They should be seen but not heard. You know, you don't listen to them. Anything they say, of course, is a lie. Honestly, the guy looked like he had been lobotomized. He's just. One thing I didn't see is like a long stream of drool, you know, hanging out of his mouth. The best part is when it ended, and they didn't show that, but there's video of it. I don't know who captured the video. There were like uh, three steps that were like maybe five inches tall. His wife had to come out and hold his hand and her hand steady him. With one. And he had to, you know how you like got really steep steps, you're coming off of like the side of a cliff, and you turn your body sideways so that you can steady yourself. Oh, man, that was, whoo, shoo, bad. It was, that's as bad as it gets. That will actually go down as, like, the worst abysmal failure of a so-called debate in the history of the United States. But they were calling all that information, which was factual, you know, like, this guy's in bad shape. Oh, no, that's cheap fakes. Like, well, it was just, I love the fact that the people that were spinning it, 
you know, lying and lying, which is another way of saying spinning. No, 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 everything's fine. You know, he's perfectly alert. And <laughs> it was so bad that even the people that were professionals at lying and spinning was like, ooh, ooh, I can't spin this. This is, <laughs> that's the best part about it. Um, anyway, basically like 99% of everybody on their side over there, whatever side that is, yeah. They're going to replace him in no later than the convention in August. I don't know who that's going to be. Um, I would have actually put money that they would have, uh, uh, you know, juiced him up with something to make him alert for a couple hours. Um, some brilliant information is coming out that people that actually watch this stuff super, super, super closely said this was, on his side, a soft coup. In other words, they purposely threw him under the bus. They made it so blatantly obvious that this guy's got to be replaced immediately that um, everybody that is actually intelligent is saying that this was uh, purposeful, purposefully done to make it so blatantly obvious. Like, there's no question, no doubt, there's no spin anymore. It's got to be replaced. So apparently that is the truth. Um, one thing he kept saying up on stage, which is really chilling, and this is what happens when uh, governments get in trouble, is they'll actually spin up something to stay in power, especially uh, conflict, kinetic conflicts. He kept saying Article 5 over and over again, which of course is a NATO article on an attack on one is attack on all, which is basically the invocation of WW3. And he kept bringing up Article 5, which is basically invoking WW3. I find that quite fascinating, and not in a good way. Um, everything actually says that between July, which is basically in 48 hours from now, July through October, everybody that I know says something big is going to happen in August. That we got from July to October for something absolutely huge to happen, and not just one front, but multiple fronts. It just seems to be totally undeniable. We've never been on the precipice of something so large, and I'm absolutely com completely convinced of that. In every way, shape, and form, I'm completely convinced about it. Um, by the way, uh, uh, players on the field, including Russia and Iran, Russia is Russian for Russia, uh, Russia, Iran, and China now know that they have this window between now and November the 4th for maneuvers. I'll let you figure out what I am meaning by maneuvers. Like, you know, they want to get something done to fulfill their agenda. You know, they've got a window now. By the way, United States, Germany, Canada, Canada, the Netherlands, and a couple other countries have urged their citizens, anybody in Lebanon, to get out immediately. Israel has told the hospitals in Israel to immediately start stocking up. There is apparently an, an inevitable, undeniable fact that conflict between Israel and Lebanon is about to kick up and kick up in the most uh, kinetic way possible. Um, Bank of Russia, uh, Bank Russia, said as, uh, the new wave of Western sanctions is causing the blockade of bank payments, including through countries that are considered friendly to Russia is leading to the perishing of the Russian economy. These sources in Russia also say that Russia will not be the only country to perish as a result of this. I'll let you figure that one out. Of course, it doesn't take a brain to figure that out. Zelensky said uh, just yesterday or like 48 hours ago on TV, the videos are out there everywhere, that uh, Ukraine has too many wounded and... Uh, and uh, erased, I'm going to use the word erased. He said, we don't have too much time because we have a lot of wounded, et cetera, et cetera, on the battlefield. This is why we don't want to have this uh, kinetic conflict continue on for years. For years, we want to prepare this joint plan and put it on the table for the next uh, summit. He's talking about capitulation. Zelensky is talking about uh, capitulation. Given the fact that I'm not a gambling person and the fact that it really was undeniable that I would have put money on the fact that they would have juiced him up with something like a wind-up toy so that he could actually perform, you know, for a couple, three hours on that debate. It seems that they purposefully threw him under the bus and these experts seem to be right. 
and even Daily Mail, not that I have any respect for Daily Mail, they're calling it a coup. You know, like his own party, you know, did the old, you know, sharpened the steel in the back maneuver, not literally, of course, and uh, they made it demonstrably undeniable by anybody that we've got to replace this guy. We can't let this go on until, uh, you know, November the 4th. We have to replace him. I can't get that image out of my mind of him coming down those short steps. He turned his body sideways like he was descending off the of Mount Kilimanjaro, like a mountaineer. He had two people helping him down five-inch stairs. I mean, he was literally turned his body sideways. I mean, it's, it's so blatantly obvious. I want to know, and it's July the 11th, which is 12 days from now. I'm only interested for purely scientific reasons. <laughs> What's going to happen when they sentence Orange Man Bad? I'm going to call him Orange Man Bad. That's what, the, that's what one side likes to call him. They call him Orange Man Bad, which is kind of funny. What's going to happen when they do a sentencing on the July the 11th? That's when he's sentenced, you know, a year, even if it were like a half a year. <laughs> it's not funny at all. I mean, the consequences of <clears throat> this country is falling apart at, at the seams. Russia, Iran, and China know they have a window between now and November. There's just going to be a lot happening. I mean, I am not a gambler at all. I put every penny on the bet that, uh, you know, that uh, poo meat fan. Let's call it that way. Poo meat fan. I beg you... Uh, I know uh, I still have a tiny bit of silver, but I sold all my silver and got a piece of land that's more than 15 acres, less than 25. I'll basically just say that. Got a box of cookies over there that I'm never going to eat. I have to give them away. The guy I bought the land from gave me uh, a box of cookies from buying the land. And it's got keys inside of it, keys to the gate and the keys uh, to uh, a cabin. Yeah, there's another cabin. I wasn't my intention to buy another cabin, but I got a I got another cabin. It's all completely furnished inside. It's got a spring right near it too. Very beautiful. I put my money where my mouth is. I don't know if you think I just sit behind this computer all the time. I think a lot of people think I do that. I mean, you see, my face is sunburned. I got a bad sunburn on my shoulder over here and on the back of my neck. Um, I do practice what I preach. I'm going to make videos behind this table, but uh, I, I get it done. I just beg you to stock up. I just beg you to prepare yourself. Whatever percentage it is you think you can allocate, um, especially things that serve multiple purposes. Um, a lot of people are emailing me wanting to know about land. I know uh, a realtor. Uh, I don't get anything from it. He's got like a cabin and five acres coming up. It's something like 70000 plus or whatever. Oh, uh, by the way, this guy, I guess, got a text message here. He flew down here from New York. This guy. He knows what's coming. He was looking to buy um, some land and a cabin. And uh, he knows what's coming. He flew all the way down here from New York because, you know, you can't buy anything in New York because... Because it's New York, and he would want to live there anyway. Um, he's got a, a cabin and land, and everybody else just keeps asking me uh, about uh, land, raw land. He always, by the way, every time I'm doing a video, he'll actually text me while I'm doing a video, and it really ticks me off. I know he doesn't know I'm making a video, and he's not psychic, but he literally texts the living snot out of me. He's a really nice guy, but... Don't text me that much. <laughs> I'm just begging you to get clean food and water, non-perishable food. Most important thing none of these goofball preppers talk about is water filtration. I don't care what it is you got or don't got. You see people like stacking up plastic flavored water in their basement. Okay, fine, you got some water. It shouldn't be in plastic. Please, God, buy some water filtration. You can go out to rainwater, a muddy puddle in your backyard, anywhere. And you can filter the water and drink it. 
People will like stock up water, but they never ever consider getting water filtration. Get good water filtration, I recommend. Depends on how many people you need to filter. The best cheap one is a Kedadin Hiker, H-I-K-E-R. Cheap, effective, simple, We've got like four of them. They're great. The next best is used by Delta Force and Navy SEALs called a Kedadin Pocket Filter. It's made in Switzerland. It's ultimate quality. It's the Lamborghini of simple two to three person water filtration. Here he is texting me again. Stop texting me while I'm making videos. Stop texting the living Hades out of me. He just, he just doesn't know. He just texts, texts too much. Um, we're trying to push Russia too far. They say all conflicts are bankers' conflicts. And all conflicts are bankers' conflicts. And the bankers see the writing on the wall. And they're, what they're trying to do is kick off a kinetic conflict to reset the endless bottomless IOUs and debt. Uh, it, this is just all playing out. Anybody with five brain cells that know how these schemers and plotters work. And they plot and scheme and scheme and plot. And when things go south and they've done too much fractional lending, too much inflation, well, yeah, we got to reset things. We need to have a conflict, you know? This is what they're trying to do. Why do you think uh, President Oatmeal Applesauce, which is what I'm going to call him, kept invoking Article 5 of NATO. When he, he kept invoking Article 5 of NATO, he's talking about WW3. I mean, doesn't that concern anybody? I ask you. I read every comment to tell you me what you think. Um, we keep pushing Russia too far. Um, I know about... Uh, what landed in Sivastopol, that's how you pronounce it in Russian. And they were uh, U.S. military hardware launched by Ukraine, and it landed on some beachgoers in Sivastopol, в Крымия, в Крым. Серьезно и ужасно. That's Russian, if you speak Russian. I have a lot of Russians that watch my videos, so they'll know what I say. Серьезно и ужасно. Yeah. It's terrible. These rocks, by the way, came from the beach in Yalta. These are these, the beach in Yalta, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. They got all these round, giant pebbles on the beach. Not sand, but, you know, these pebbles. These came off the beach of Yalta. I've been, like, holding these for, like, 20 years. I don't know why. I picked them up when I was there. It's like, I'll always have these rocks. It'll make me... Flashback to when I was walking the beach uh, in Yalta, which then belonged to uh, Ukraine. Of course, now it's been under, since 2008, under complete control of Russia. I don't care about politics. I just don't, you know. I want people to be happy and wise. But I can see what's coming. The writing is on the wall. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. I don't... Uh, I, I don't, anybody accuses me of any uh, fear mongering, you don't know me at all. I don't care if you hate me, or despise me, and call me whatever name you want, but don't ever accuse me of that. I'm never interested in doing that. Having your head on a swivel and seeing what is so blatantly obvious coming down the pike is not fear, it's the opposite of fear. Be prepared, and you're prepared, then you'll, you know. Nobody gets out of this life alive, but if you're prepared, you're way better off than 99.9% .9 of everybody. Like I said, you don't have to outrun the tiger or the bear. You just have to outrun all the other stupid people that didn't prepare at all. <laughs> Remember that old line, that joke? They're running. The guy says, you're not going to outrun that tiger. He's so fast. He said, I don't have to outrun the tiger. I only have to outrun you, which is true. That's why being prepared in survival actually works. You don't have to outrun the bear, which, by the way, is the animal for Rasia. You just have to outrun the other people. <sighs> Tell me what you think. Have a lovely week. My neck is absolutely killing me from bad sunburn. Whew. Also, too, we hauled in a gigantic chest freezer. That thing was huge! You know, it's like squeezing a giant chest freezer through a little door like that. <laughs> oh, boy. They're kind of lightweight, but that's like the largest chest freezer any human being has ever seen. It was huge. It took us, it took five people to get it in there. Oh, it's in there. Whew. 
Oh, I forgot. I was uh, screwing the little wheels underneath the chest freezer. It was raised up on a thing. And I was laying down in, in the duck poop and goose poop. Whack. <laughs> screwing the little wheels on the corner of that gigantic chest freezer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good times. There's a million degrees outside. I was laying down in duck poop. Screwing little tiny wheels on that gigantic chest freezer. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I like my friends a lot. They're great people. It's like, ah, I can remember back just yesterday. I was laying in duck poop, screws, screwing wheels on a giant chest freezer in million degree heat. Ah, good, good times. Good times. <laughs> it's okay. Got, got a sense of humor. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely weekend. Maybe that guy will stop texting me. <laughs> uh.